Hi everyone, I'm Sander from 16441 Pretty Smart Robotics uh, and today I'm informing you about belted and uh, chain macrom drives uh, by showing you how we made our own custom drivetrain. Like, uh, we find it difficult to find explanatory... Uh, a lot of teams have a standard mechanism kit uh, from Rev or Gobilda, uh, where you place the motors uh, in the U channels, which then drives uh, the wheel with a 90 degree bend. Uh, although this works fine, uh, custom drivetrains uh, can provide much more options in design choices. Uh, a lot of the times, this requires uh, the wheels to be driven using belts or chains. Before we get into the design of a robot, I'd first like to talk about some design considerations uh, you have to make beforehand. For example, choosing between live axle and a dead axle designs. Uh, so for belt and chain drives, uh, there are two options for having your wheel set up. Um, uh, you can choose uh, either to go for a live axle like this one, uh, or for a uh, dead axle, which is this one. On a live axle design, the sprocket and the wheel are both mounted onto the axle. Uh, so when power is given, uh, the sprocket rotates, with, which will rotate the axle, uh, and which will then rotate the wheel. So uh, I can show you by uh, turning the sprocket that's uh, onto the motor, uh, you can see that the uh, that the axle starts moving because the sprocket behind it starts moving, and then uh, the wheel also turns. Uh, and on each end of the uh, axle is a uh, flanked ball bearing, uh, which will make it like rotate smoothly. But with a dead axle, the uh, sprocket is also uh, mounted onto the wheel, uh, but the bearings are not on uh, each end of the frame, uh, but are actually in the wheel assembly. This way, when the sprocket rotates, uh, the wheel moves with it on the axle itself. Now the axle is stationary and uh, mounted onto the plate with a screw uh, and the wheel is still able to rotate. You might have noticed uh, with the live axle design uh, I have the chain behind the wheel and with the dead axle design I have it in front of it. Uh, this was just because I was experimenting with different configurations, uh, not because dead axle can't be behind it or vice versa. It is however something you have to consider. Uh, I would personally recommend putting them in front of the wheel, uh, since when we look at the uh, full assembly, uh, it frees up space in the middle, uh, which can then be used for other purposes. But if for any reason that isn't possible, you can do it behind as well. But the last thing you have to uh, think about is if you want to use uh, chains like this one, uh, or if you want to use um, belts that I've used over here. In a study done by FRC team 234 CyberBlue, uh, they concluded that belts are slightly better. Uh, however, you can't customize the size, uh, which you can do uh, with chains. Anyways, both are solid options, uh, so I would recommend choosing based uh, on the materials you already have. Alright, so in the next portion of the video, I will walk you through uh, how we designed uh, our drive train, uh, starting with the side plates. So the most important thing for making your side plates uh, is deciding where you need your holes uh, or openings uh, in it. Uh, screw holes need to be uh, made around the edge uh, to mount the standoffs. Uh, so that's like uh, for every uh, side plate the same. Uh, and because this is a live axle uh, plate, this one, we need bearing holes on both plates. On the inner plate, we also need holes for the screws and a shaft of the motor. Uh, and since we're using a quad block from Gobilda uh, on the uh, full robot design, we need these also as well. The dead axle design is very similar, but instead of the uh, bearing holes, we just need screw holes. And since this one uh, has the chain in front of the wheel, uh, we need bigger holes uh, in the side plate to let the motor go through. Uh, and also screw holes for the standoff uh, that will mount the motor. In your first sketch, uh, you need to decide the length and height uh, and you need to make all the holes uh, depending on your design choices. Uh, and the other things, um, like all these holes are mostly for aesthetic purposes, but also to uh, lose some weight. To do this, you need a different ske uh, sketch uh, with the pattern you'd like. And then uh, I've used the Leiden tool, uh, which is kind of like an extrude or a removal uh, but it uh, rounds the edges off uh, in a nice way. Then for the motor assembly uh, of the drivetrain, it's quite simple. 
uh, if you're going for a chain design, a simple way is just mounting a sprocket onto a hub uh, and then putting that onto your motor and just uh, tightening this up and it just, that, that will work fine. And the belted version uh, is even simpler. Uh, you just need a motor with a pulley on it and that's it. So then going over to the wheel assembly of the uh, live axle is as follows. Uh, as you can see, the bearings are at the end of the Rex uh, shaft of uh, Gobilda. Uh, although it's not present here, uh, the Rex shaft has an e-clip uh, on one side preventing it from uh, going any further. Um, the other side doesn't have uh, an e-clip, so it just mounted a shaft collar on it. Uh, to connect both uh, the sprocket and the wheel uh, to the axle, uh, we use two hubs uh, also from Gobilda. Uh, it's not like this is the only way to do this, uh, so if you have any other solution, uh, like, like be creative, um, that's maybe cheaper, uh, you can probably go for that, but this is just uh, convenient. So for the wheel assembly of the chain deck axle, uh, we made a couple of custom parts. Uh, we have some spaces over here and uh, there, uh, but most interesting are uh, these two bearing holders. In between these uh, two parts, uh, it's of course the wheel. Uh, that is held together by screws. On one side, uh, the uh, screw goes into the wheel, and then, like, I have another thing here, and then goes into the screw holes. And on the other side, it's uh, pretty similar, so it will also go through the wheel and then into these screw holes, uh, but, like, the socket head will, uh, would otherwise be in the way. So this bearing holder uh, also has these holes, so the head of the screw can actually go in here, so it actually fits. And to mount the uh, sprocket uh, onto uh, this bearing holder, uh, we just uh, put some screws in here uh, with some screw holes, and it should be fine. The belted version is very similar to the chained one. Uh, the only difference is that uh, this part uh, is slightly modified uh, so that it has a uh, pulley uh, we can wrap a belt around. So a belt like this, especially when you're a beginner, uh, may look very scary or uh, like very complex, uh, especially if you put it into a full robot. Um, but actually when you just uh, break it down into uh, specific parts, it's actually very simple. Uh, you can recognize uh, all of the, uh, the different assemblies uh, I've just explained. Uh, like this is one uh, for the dead axle uh, belted and then we have the uh, chain version of the dead axle design uh, which you've also already seen and then uh, lastly we have the live axle design which is also uh, very simple you can have a better look in the onshape document yourself uh, which i will link in the description all of the parts uh, that i've used uh, or all of the design uh, things of uh, used you can copy it if you'd like uh, of course, experiment, be creative. Uh, that's of course the whole point. But um, like, if there's some specific parts that you would like to copy, that's perfectly fine. These are all CAD models, uh, but we did actually make a prototype on the belted uh, dead axle design. Uh, since this is uh, an off-season project, uh, we just used wood and uh, used the wrong U channels, uh, but we did get it driving. Uh, and as you can see, it's pretty smooth. Although we're not experts on the subject, uh, I hope this will help you in understanding how to build a custom mechanism drive and how you can use belts uh, or chains to power your wheels. If you have any other questions uh, or anything else you'd like us to cover, uh, please let us know in the comment section, uh, Instagram or in the FTC Discord.